Okay. So, um, Brian, why don't you go ahead and uh, I'm going to drive most of this off of a PowerPoint slide. So if you can um, spotlight you. Spotlight what you me. Need? I'll yep. share my screen. Um, oh, you moved. So I got Alex instead. <laughs> Hi, Alex. That's appropriate. <laughs> That's been the worst thing is like when I go to click on somebody and somebody adds to the room and it, the list bounces around and then I click somebody else by accident. The fun challenges, it's all yours, Greta. Okay, I've changed my view so I can no longer see who else coming in. Um, but uh, there's a lot on our agenda. So I wanna go ahead and, um, and get started. Can everybody see my, uh, my slides okay? Are there shadows? Um, are the little gray boxes happening? Anybody feedback? Can you can you hear me? Can looks you great. Me? No okay. no boxes. Looks great. Great. Um, well, uh, welcome everybody to the 2021 business meeting, and thank you very much for being here. Um, uh, it's a rich time for the the society, as it's a rich time for for um, society at large, and so we have a lot of business to discuss. And I really value your engagement um, with this process. So um, without further ado, I want to get started. So we have plenty of time for, for everything that we need to discuss. Um, so this is, so for many of you, this may be your first uh, AAS business meeting. And we run this as a, as a structured formal business meeting, trying to follow rules of, uh, Robert's rules of order. Um, and I want to thank Brent Opel, who's our uh, society parliamentarian, for helping um, me and us uh, do that on task. But the first um, order of business is to improve the minutes from the 2019 business meeting. We did not have a business meeting in 2020 because of um, all of the things. Uh, so um, I just want to call a motion to approve the minutes from 2019 and ask so for a second. I see Rich's hand. I hear Brian. Okay, um, second. Thank you so much. So all in favor, raise your hand. I guess we'll need digital hands here. And I'll need help keeping track of them. Thank you. OK. Paula, can you tell me if the minutes are approved? Um, so I realized that because I'm typing, I'm asked, I've asked Brian to uh, keep track of that. But I, I got that Brian Patrick made the motion, Rich Bradley seconded it, and I assumed all approved. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, it's our first ever virtual business meeting. So um, I'm going to start the meeting with announcements of um, the, the major AAS activities that have happened uh, in the past year, primarily. Um, so, um, and also just point out that um, in the interest of time and efficiency, we're going to manage comments and questions in the chat, and there'll be time at the end for, for questions and comments and new business. So um, uh, we welcome all of your comments, but please just put them in the chat for now. So one of the major activities that the society has been undertaking for years, and it just was culminated this year, is that the, we have a new website, which you all are um, familiar with from interacting with this meeting. You're the first test drivers of the website. And I just want to thank Daniel Glor and Heiko Metzer and all of the people that have contributed to this process. Um, and it's been a big one. Um, and uh, we have developed the the website with attention to um, building capabilities that can support um, membership uh, and staying on top of men membership and fees for membership and also um, the managing meetings. So, um, uh, so have a look at that. But one of the things about membership is that even if you've been a member for a long time, you need to create a new membership login on the new website. Um, so we appreciate you doing that. So um, a second major thing we've done is create, uh, um, with the passing of, uh, of Norm Platnick last year in April, um, we've been able to create an award 
to acknowledge taxonomic research um, and awarded the first round of that. Um, those of you who have been part of the meeting and have, uh, have hopefully um, seen all of that, and I want to congratulate Ivan as our first award recipient. I saw him pass into the meeting, so um, uh, we're excited to have that um, honor norm and to support early career researchers doing taxonomy. Um, another thing that was accomplished this past year, entirely due to the work of Andy Roberts with supports from others, is that the AAS Constitution has been updated. Um, this might seem like a mundane bit of detail, um, but the Constitution is, um, is the document where we, we, we keep track of, of all of the charges, all of the details, all of the roles and responsibilities of our society. It's always available and transparent on our website. Um, so I just want to make sure everybody knows that's there and thank Andy Roberts for that work. Um, but also the major activities that you all have been experiencing are that the um, executive committee in lieu of having in-person uh, activities hosted the virtual 2020 and virtual in 2021 uh, meetings. And um, uh, I just want to acknowledge with that, uh, I'll elaborate a little bit more on this in the announcements. But um, that this has just been incredibly complex, challenging times. And given the breadth of engagement with this meeting, um, uh, many people are with us uh, in places where we're working our way through the pandemic. And many people that are participating in this, uh, in this meeting are coming in from places that are, are still very ravaged by, by the pandemic. Um, and our hearts go out to you. I also just want to say that um, in leadership uh, and uh, being in this in this moment that has turned up so much energy um, for change, societal change, with the with the death of, of George Floyd um, and with the pandemic, is uh, um, has been interesting to navigate and also churned up fertile soil for change. And so um, I feel that the energy and momentum that came to this meeting and um, that in brought new initiatives and development as part of this meeting will be carried through um, as a positive byproduct of all of this, um, all of these energies. So just as a quick note, since we didn't um, have a meeting, a business meeting last year, we hosted a virtual meeting in 2020. We had over 400 registr registrants for that meeting, um, even though it was just a, a, a few days. So we had a keynote from Martin Ramirez uh, honoring um, Norm Platnick. Um, we had a, a diversity, equity, and inclusion discussion um, that we got feedback about uh, and, uh, and learned a, a bit about the approach and made changes uh, this year based on that. Um, we also had an iNaturalist workshop that Marshall Ladeen um, hosted in a bio blitz. Um, but that, talk, that meeting only had one day of talks that were focused on early career. Um, students and, and postdocs that whose careers would be the most impacted by the pandemic. So, but I wanted to acknowledge this is a, the picture that we took, and um, this is here as inspiration for us getting a picture at the banquet of participants this year. So, um, but the organizing team was Mercedes Burns, Lisa Chamberlain, um, Jerry McWilliams, and myself, and uh, members of our, our outreach committee, our brand new outreach committee back then, um, Sebastian. Uh, Marshall Hadeen and Catherine Scott um, played a major role in developing that programming last year as well. And from that, um, uh, the, the virtual meeting uh, is a major product that a lot of the discussion of this business meeting will loop back to. So, um, but I just wanted to take a moment and thank um, the, the organizing team that are highlighted here. Uh, so in particular, um, so, Sarah Stallwagen um, organized the scientific, the, the talks and the posters, all the scheduling that worked so smoothly. Um, Sebastian and Catherine and Rich um, did a lot of the affiliated program. We were calling them the A-team for awesome arachnid activities because we didn't quite know what to call them. But, and I just want to recognize that this is a product of, um, of, uh, of the outreach committee, engagement and out outreach committee, and the, the turned up passion for arachnology. And I, I, um, I certainly got a lot out of it this meeting, and I hope you did too. Dan Gore um, managed all the website logistics, making a big push to get it ready to, to support this meeting. 
Um, Peter Midford has been doing all the YouTube background. Um, Brian Patrick uh, is, has been na navig navigating tech and communicating with the membership. So I wanna thank all of them. But with this energy of the organizing team and the virtual platform, we were able to do a number of things, um, including broaden the reach of access to the, to the meetings. Um, we had four, 522 total registrants for this meeting, which blows all previous records out of the water. And it included arachnologists and arachnids from across the globe. Um, uh, an impressive, impressive set of people um, joined us for this meeting, and we're really happy about that. We were also to expand the program beyond the, the normal for AAS meetings, and that included um, programming to support outreach, professional development, connecting um, arachnologists across interests and across professions. Um, and we test drove um, some, uh, some programming to support inclusion of more diverse research contributions, uh, including highlighting contributions from natural history observations and community science. Uh, um, and the research presentations alone in posters and talks represented contributors from 21 countries, 21 countries. Um, I'm so pleased we were able to do that. For the first time, to my knowledge, um, the society supported talks in other languages, and I'm really pleased we did that. Um, we are looking for people that can help us translate captions for those um, on our YouTube videos. So reach out to me or any of the members of the organizing committee if you're interested in that. Um, for the first time, we've, uh, we've had pre-recorded talks um, to support people's participation. Also, we had a mentorship pairing, pro pairing program and 20 me members of our, uh, of our community stepped up to mentor uh, other people, um, largely folks um, coming in from other countries and folks that might not necessarily have strong mentorship. So I wanna thank you so much for stepping up to that charge. Um, and these are all things that we'll come back to uh, later in the new business as we think about which of these um, things that we'll maintain. Um, so in the spirit of what we want to maintain and what we'll be able to sustain um, in um, future in-person meetings. Okay, so with that, I wanna go through um, the reports. So, um, and we have a number of reports. These are all, hopefully you have the agenda that was sent um, by Brian Patrick this morning. So we're just gonna go through reports and, and detail the highlights. But the first thing we wanna do is um, announce the election results. And I'm hoping that Mercedes Burns is here um, and uh, able to do that. Mercedes, are you yep. here? Great. I'm here. Um, uh, so I'll start by uh, thanking um, Casey Fowler Finn, um, who I guess technically is, it's her job <laughs> um, as the, the director. Um, I'm stepping down as director of um, the EC this year. Um, the entire time has been pretty much virtual. So that kind of sucks. <laughs> uh, but um, Casey will be taking over as the senior director and um, uh, we also were uh, helped in our, our um, compiling the candidates um, by uh, Rowan McGinley, who I, I'm not sure if he's here, but um, so again, thank you to Casey and Rowan for um, stepping up and, and helping me um, solicit candidacy or, or request the um, statements from everyone. Um, so I was helped greatly by them. Um, so on the ballot for elections this year was um, president-elect, uh, secretary, and uh, director. Um, treasurer, not secretary. Treasurer. Oh, my bad. Sorry. No one's taking your place, Paula. That's, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, so uh, Kara Shillington agreed to continue serving as the AAS treasurer, um, to which we greatly appreciate um, because she she has all the um, information and she has all the skills and she's um, you know carefully trying to steer us in the right direction with making decisions um, and keeping the uh, committee solvent. 
um, and the whole organization solvent. Um, so for director, there were a large number of candidates who threw their hat into the ring and I wanna thank each of them. Um, Sarah Rose, Mark Milne, Dan Proud, uh, Hannah Wood, and Kenny Chapin all agreed to step up for director. Um, and based on the elections, the winner is Hannah Wood. So thank you, Hannah, for agreeing to run and, and, and we look forward to, uh, or I look forward to rather having you take over for, for us. Um, so thank you, Hannah. Um, and uh, for the position of president-elect, we had uh, two candidates. Um, Mike Draney and Linda Rayer. Um, and uh, I am pleased to say that um, it was an extremely, extremely close election for this position this year. Um, and um, the elected uh, person who will now be taking on the president electoral is Linda Rayer. So thank you so much, Linda, for agreeing to run. And thank you to all the candidates for agreeing to run, putting together a statement and just throwing your hat into a ring. It takes um, a lot of courage, I think. Um, and, you know, and it takes some vision. And I personally, when I read Linda Rare's sort of statement or her story, I was, you know, I knew that we would be in, in pretty good hands there. So um, I appreciate you both. And, um, uh, Hannah and Linda, good luck. And um, uh, Greta, I guess I'll, I'll turn it over to you now. All right, thank you, Mercedes. Um, and uh, I also wanna thank the, the members that are rotating off the executive committee. All of our positions are two year. So Alex Berry, our student representative um, is rotating off and we'll come back to that in a bit. Mercedes, thank you so much for your service. Um, as, a, as a bit of a teaser, I can tell you that Mercedes is not going to go away from leadership in the society, so stay tuned. And Rich Bradley um, uh, is rotating off as past president. So um, thank you so much to Rich uh, for, um, for taking the realm in a wonderful way for so long and contributing to the executive committee. Um, so we'll have more time to thank them later at the, at the banquet. But. Okay. So um, there are a number of reports. I'll direct you to the, the combined document of reports. And I'm just going to go through some highlights. And I'm going to do this fairly quickly. Um, but they tell the narrative of the status of, of, um, of, the, of the society. So um, one of the major things we do as a society is we manage SNAME. Um, and the sales of, of, our, of SNAME are one of the major money makers for the society and the proceeds directly go to support students and early career researchers. I just wanna point out to everyone, the electronic version is available for sale and there's information on my website about that. Also, um, we have the American Arachnological, uh, Arachnology Newsletter that um, the secretary Paula Cushing curates. We have two, um, two of those a year, one in April or in May and one in October. And it's a great place to publish natural history observations and outreach activities, um, et cetera. So please send articles to Paula and spread the word about this opportunity. And when these newsletters come out, please spread them broadly to share the, of the wonderful things we're doing in the society. Um, also keep an eye out for the Journal of Arachnology press releases and share them. There's one that went out. Um, I've been, you know, the little time I've had outside, people have said, hey, have you heard about the spiders that eat snakes? Um, because there was a great su successful press release that Paula sent out um, uh, last week. Okay, so the treasurer's report um, I'm giving on behalf of uh, Kara Shillington. So, um, and the punchline, major punchline, is that uh, the income from our membership in SNAME doesn't cover costs. Um, and uh, I'll show you some, some data in just a moment, but um, a couple things here. The new website was expensive, but, but worth it for sure. Um, and we have uh, major commitments for ongoing support that I want to make sure everybody's aware of. That includes grants for travel and research, um, publishing the Journal of Arachnology. Um, as of 2019, the society committed to supporting the World Spider Catalog with $5,000 a year. Um, and we support the annual meetings. 
Um, so uh, in 2020, we spent, uh, so these are all numbers up, updated to 2020. Um, we spent $18,851 more than we brought in. So um, I think this graph tells, tells it all, tells the story. So we've had the total assets um, have dropped um, precipitously in the last five years. Um, and this has a little bit more detail, a summary of different accounts. So um, uh, Schwab is an investment account um, that we uh, only draw from if we really need to. Fortunately, that's been increased, increasing. Um, revenue from SNAME has been slowly increasing from a low in 2016, 2017. 2016 was when it was um, the second edition came out. Um, and the operations uh, um, uh, all come from checking in PayPal. And you can see there's been a steep decline. Um, and that's mostly reflected, um, mostly because of increased costs of journal publications and um, our, our, us beginning to support the World Spider catalog. Um, so we'll loop back to that in, in new business. Um, the membership report, um, so our, our total members in 2020 were 551. This is strong. So our membership numbers are quite strong. And a quick breakdown of that, 53% um, are regular members, 22% are student members, 10% um, of our membership is sponsored, which is remarkable. And I wanna just shout out a thank you to all of the sponsors um, uh, that support, support membership. Um, 12% uh, are life members. Um, as of the last check, 2021 membership is down so far relative to last year. And we're wondering if that reflects um, the lack of a discount for members to attend meetings. So in our virtual meetings, um, we've really changed our the fee structure. Um, uh, and in the effort to bring in as many people as possible, um, we dropped the discount for members to attend meetings. And so that might, might be impacting our membership. Institutional memberships remain in steady decline. Um, uh, so that's been going on in the background. So once again, um, please update your membership information on the new website uh, to help us keep track of that. Um, okay, I feel like I'm going through this quickly, but I, I wanna do this so we're not here all evening and be sure to take notes on questions that you wanna, wanna contribute or type them into the chat and um, we'll get back to them later. So the Journal of Arachnology, um, Deb, Deborah Smith is the editor-in-chief for, for the JOA. And so just to summarize some of the key points from her report, um, some stats from 2020. Um, the, uh, so our, sorry, my images are covering up my slides here. I can't see them. Um, the, uh, so for finances, we had our income from JSTOR, Bio One, and membership totaled 37,689, but the expenditures totaled um, 58,998. Um, one of the major influences of that deficit is that the page costs are ever increasing. So um, that's playing a role in that steep decline in the treasury report that we saw. Um, so uh, again, we'll address that in, in new business. Um, the manuscripts though, we had 96 submissions, um, which is well within the norm, a 50% acceptance rate. Um, the impact factor attempts to hover around one. Um, it was 0 0.945, which was the same as um, 2019 and almost identical to the zoo tax up, um, but below the peak of 1.24 in 2018. And I just wanna um, really, we've seen so much exciting science. Please consider submitting your research to the JOA. Um, also, uh, good news, Yael Lubin has joined the editorial group as subject editor for, for behavior. Um, so, so there's that. Okay, one of the major things we do is support student grants and Brent Hendrick Hendrickson oversees that process. Um, there are two grant funds, the Arachnological Research Fund, um, that provides up to $1,000 for any aspect of behavior, ecology, physiology, or evolution of any arachnid group. There's also the Vince Roth Fund for Systematic Research um, that provides up to $1,000 by taxonomy or systematics of any arachnid group. Um, this year, 2021, 
the between these two funds, there were a combined 36 proposals. Um, 86%, most of them came from graduate students, uh, only 11 from undergrads, which is down from 2020 um, and might reflect COVID, um, we don't know. Uh, um, I wanted to emphasize that of these, only 47% came from the US and Mexico. We had none from Canada this year, which is slightly unusual, or U Europe. The rest, the 53% are um, being distributed to students around the world. So. Um, the total funds that we requested were 32,000 and we awarded um, uh, $15,050. Uh, and this is how it's distributed. Um, I would love to have time to you know, detail all of the, all of the awardees, but um, we don't have time, unfortunately. But see um, the report submitted by Brent for full details of the award. And it's also gonna be detailed in the, in the next American Arachnological, the next American Arachnology newsletter. And I want to thank all the people um, that do this um, hard work to review grants and award them. Um, the other thing we fund is the Herb Levy Memorial Fund for Arachnological Research that is overseen by Petra Searwald. And these funds are awards, this, this funds awards to non-students, including postdocs, of up to 2,000 to support preliminary work um, uh, uh, or field work, preliminary data or field work. And this year, we had 10 total applicants requesting $20,378. Um, they funded four, either part or in full, for $5,000. Um, and the, uh, the, the team um, requested securing funds for up to one final survey. So um, they often get uh, proposals to do final surveys in areas that are urgently needed. However, um, in competition with other proposals, they don't rise to the top. Um, so the EC approved allocation of up, to, of up to one award per year toward a final survey in areas where they're urgent, urgently needed. However, given our current financial situation, the total expenditures for this grant um, will not increase until our finances stabilize a little bit. Okay, so the outreach committee has um, been formed and cohered and launched during the, the pandemic, even though it was, uh, you know, it's an idea that predates that by a lot. It was formed in 2020, since, the, since we didn't have a business meeting last year, I just want to give a little bit of an overview so folks are aware of it. Formed in 2020, um, uh, and it has three subcommittees, education and engagement, that are uh, co-chaired by Linda Rayer and Karen Candelosi. Um, community science um, that are overseen by Catherine Scott, Sebastian Escobari, and Marshall Hadeem. You've seen the products of that. You've also seen the products of the social me media subcommittee um, with the outreach associated with this meeting. Um, and major activities are developing and have been developing and curating experiences surrounding the meeting. So you've just seen that. Um, you've also probably noticed an expanded social media presence. Um, and uh, there's a lot of work to build resources um, on the website and there'll be more to come. As I mentioned, Alex Berry uh, is graduating. So we're looking for a new student representative. Alex, uh, so the student representative serves on the executive committee um, and they represent uh, student interests to the EC and host student activities at annual meetings. So this is really um, a plug to, uh, to try to find a replacement as Alex Berry is, is graduating. So again, we're really grateful for his service and looking for someone to step in. So students, please reach out to me if you're interested. Um, and mentors, please talk to your students and send recommendations um, to me uh, or Alex. And we plan just for equi equ equitability, for equity reasons to send a Google form to registrants at this meeting. Um, uh, so we make sure we uh, have access to everybody that, um, that might be interested. Um, the Common Names Committee is chaired by Sarah Rose and um, actions on that committee have included um, uh, adding a committee member to broaden the range of taxonomic expertise, um, including an uh, Acarine taxonomist, which is exciting. Um, also, there's, uh, they're going to be uh, adding some things to the website, including a document with common name rules, 
and a form to upload new requests. So keep an eye out for that. Um, so one of our, our written rules uh, in the constitution is that the president elect is responsible for um, finding future meeting sites. So um, uh, we have 2022 uh, to look forward to at UC Davis. And at the end of this meeting, uh, Jason Bond will tell us more about that. But beyond that, the punchline of, of Andy's report is that we need hosts. <laughs> and so um, and so I just add here, trust us, it's fun. And if you're daunted, uh, the society will help you. And um, if, uh, if you're at all tempted, you don't even have to commit, just if you're tempted to discuss it, please reach out to Andy Roberts. Um, and uh, so we can make sure we've got a, a steady list of future meeting sites. Okay, so there are a couple other committees that I didn't comment on. Um, and I, at this point, before moving to new business, um, uh, again, apologies that that was quick, but uh, uh, there's a lot of new business and I wanna get to it. But um, so I'd like to move uh, to uh, approve the committee reports. So I moved. I will so moved. second. Yvonne Magaish actually had his hand up before Alex Berry. So Rich first, uh, Yvonne Magaish seconded. Okay. Votes to approve. Let's see those digital hands. Oh, this is great. I can see everyone flashing by. Thank you. I'll ask for Brian or um, Paula to let me know. Um, I'm trying. Okay. Because of the particular view we end, it makes it a little more. I don't think we actually have a majority. So if people could use your reactions to raise your hand and leave them up until I tell you otherwise. And if you're not raising your hand, I am assuming then that you are voting against. Again, this okay, is- Okay, now a, we've got more than enough. Okay, this is a, simply approving the, the reports that were submitted by the committees that were circulated to you. You can all put your hands down now. I apologize for the delay. Okay, thank you. And once again, I wanna just acknowledge and um, thank all of the, the work that's happened um, through the committees, through the society over the last year. It's been a year where everyone has been exhausted and had fractured attention. And, and so I, I particularly appreciate all of the work that's been done on behalf of the society. Okay, so, um, this is a long list of business items. This is on the bottom of the agenda that I sent. Um, and so we're gonna transition to working through each of these items of new business. Um, and I wanted to just start out by showing you all of these so that you know what's coming up. Um, and at the end, we'll have additional new business items and time for Q and A. Um, uh, so keep track of the questions that you have in the comments. We really wanna hear them, but in the spirit of, of um, not being here all night, we're gonna to try to compartmentalize those to the end. Um, so, okay, so the executive committee um, approved of forming a new committee uh, to move forward initiatives to support diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and uh, gratefully, uh, Mercedes Burns uh, stepped up uh, to be the chair. So we're very, very excited that Mercedes is interested in taking this on. Um, she's gonna, in the coming weeks, work with the executive committee to create um, the committee. Um, the way we're envisioning this is that we'll have an initial one year as this being an ad hoc committee. That'll give the committee time to, to formalize, be formalized and test drive some initiatives and then next year, um, we, we plan to formalize this into a, a permanent committee um, that will be part of the American Arachnological Society. 
some of the charges for this, and um, I didn't check with Mercedes before bulleting this list, uh, so I don't want to alarm uh -oh. her, but <laughs> <laughs> this is just some things that were on the top of my mind that we will be we'll be working with Mercedes to formalize the charges. So, but just to give you all an idea, and a lot of these ideas are emerging from conversations with folks at this meeting. So I just want you to know that we're hearing you and we're taking action. Um, so, uh, one of the things that we'd like for this group to do is to look carefully at the code of conduct. We have a code of conduct um, that you can find on the website. Uh, it's, it's been there for a, a while. We, we continuously um, expand it. But we want it, most of it is centered on um, respectful meeting etiquette and behavior um, while people are at the annual meeting. So that, that's such a big part of our society. Um, so uh, we will work with this group um, to revise that code of conduct and expand it. Um, we're hoping this group coordinates with the Engagement and Outreach Committee to develop sustained ancillary programming at annual meetings that directly address um, uh, DEI issues. Um, some of the things we've done at this meeting, um, we want to we want to build built-in programs to support inclusivity, including things like the mentorship connections we were able to make at this meeting website resources and um, fill in ideas here. So jot down notes you might want to discuss um, to put on the radar uh, if you have ideas that you don't see represented here and we'll talk about them um, at the end. Okay, another thing that's come up um, a lot after both last year and this year is um, just how wonderful some of the capabilities are that are enhanced by a virtual connection. And so we'll be discussing what aspects of the virtual conference we will maintain in future in-person meetings. Um, we, uh, there's clear interest in retaining the ability to um, connect remotely, and that comes from all directions. The executive committee is very interested in that, as are um, the members that we've um, met and discussed. Um, I want to make sure everybody's aware that our AAS investment in the website um, was expensive, but we added, after the virtual meeting last year, um, dedicated meeting functionalities in, explicitly to facilitate a, versatile connect, a, a virtual connection um, that can be retained in our in-person meeting. So um, moving forward, uh, we're going to work with meeting hosts to think about logistics and consider how the society can make this feasible um, on top of the in-person logistics. We don't want this to be crushing to our hosts. We want to think about what the society can do um, to support the, all the benefits that happen from maintaining virtual connections at meetings. So um, we're going to be sending out a Google poll about components of this meeting that you want to maintain um, and uh, that you think are particularly important. So look for that um, in the coming days. Okay, moving on. Um, uh, you probably heard that um, next year is the 50th anniversary of the American Arachnological Society. So the first in-person meeting was in um, uh, 1972. Uh, and uh, so next year is the first, the 50th anniversary of that. Um, the first uh, Journal of Arachnology was published a year later in 1973, but um, we are, uh, in conversation about how to really acknowledge and honor that. I think coming back off the heels of the energy of this meeting and being in person um, will make for a pretty spectacular year next year. Um, so uh, it's all kind of positive news. So addressing our financial circumstances. So we, we talked at length about that at the ex executive committee meeting. Um, one of the things that may have to happen is page the dynamic nature of page charges in the digital age um, means that we're going to be in, in conversations about whether or not and what it would look like for the Journal of Arachnology to reinstate page charges in different ways to balance the cost of, public of publication. So um, to think about this, the executive committee has charged the Journal of Arachnology editorial board with fully evaluating the journal expense deficit with the goal of figuring out a model in which um, it pays for itself. So there'll be a lot of action on that front um, in the coming months. 
Um, and just a couple other small details, not small, but details about financial management that have, um, have been in discussion. We've, uh, because uh, we've made some revenue from this meeting um, that has come from a lot of donation um, and, uh, and this is just from the registration fees. So um, there has been conversation about what to do with that. Uh, we're gonna put it towards the cost of the new website, which is the kind of the core of facilitating our ability to sustain this kind of activity. Um, we've decided that the same proceeds uh, and money that was raised for the Platinum GoFundMe was, is gonna go into the investment account where it will raise um, interest to help sustain the awards that will be given for, um, for um, the, the Platinum Award. Another bit of, of uh, less great news is that the, we have a, 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 we've had a fund, the Schlinger Fund, made from generous donations, um, and it's out of money, unfortunately. Uh, so it can, can't be used anymore to support non-student travel to annual meetings. This is something we offered um, to folks. Uh, we, all, we have student travel awards, that's fine, that's still in place, um, but just so people know that this fund um, is not going to be available to support next year's meeting. There's some potential for a reinstatement at a later date as we um, think about the, what to do with the, the fumes of funds that are left uh, in that account. Um, because as, as we've looked straight at the financial circumstances and how dynamic they are right now, um, we want to focus intensely, we need to focus intensely, intensely for the financial viability of the, of the society um, to think about sustainable long-term strategies. So we're going to create an ad hoc development committee um, to, to talk about things like, um, to, to talk about a financial strategy that can sustain these efforts. And the core guiding principles of that are to, you know, we want to make membership fees accessible to support broad inclusion in, in society. So we'll be revisiting our current policies and thinking about how to um, make sure they're um, as broad and inclusive as, as we'd like, including possible support for um, folks. Or currently, we support uh, students that are people that are eligible um, uh, come from countries that are defined by a very specific um, financial circumstance that's at the country level. So we're going to be talking about whether or not that's the best model, given that we have um, uh, people that would love to be members that can't afford it and might be prohibited that are in our country. So um, and so that we're going to be revisiting that, but also doing that um, in light of how we can maintain funds to support society priorities. So um, uh, we will be next year. You'll hear um, about what emerges from that development committee. Um, with all of that, um, I'm going to just going to call out Paula, suggesting that um, <laughs> that I just make a plug to the donations page right now, as people realize the current state of our, our financial situation, the momentary state of our financial situation. Um, one thing that I've learned in uh, in my time, my honored time as presidency, is how strong the bones of the society are. So I have no doubt we'll um, turn this around and uh, be able to move forward continuing support for the things we believe in, um, things we already do, but also expanding it to encompass um, the initiatives that we want to develop. Okay, um, this is a little bit redundant, but the end of my, um, uh, my announcements of new business, and then I'll open it up for Q&A. Um, from conversations at this meeting, um, there's been a call for facilitating net mentorship networks um, and the potential for building into the website systems for communicating availability of mentors and connecting folks um, who could benefit from mentorship at different career stages. So um, uh, just know that we've heard that and it's recorded. Um, we also uh, have been had many conversations about making membership accessible and affordable to international students and others for whom the fees are prohibited that are not from qualifying countries. So that is going to be directly addressed. I just want to make sure people who brought these things to my attention um, here unambiguously that they've been heard. Okay, with that, um, it's 4.45. I wanna open the floor. Sorry, I lost my cursor. Um, 
So questions and new business from the floor. And to manage that, this, um, uh, please use the raise hand function. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, if you use rate raise hand, we'll recognize you and unmute you, or you can type in the chat and um, we can address it that way. So new business from the floor or questions or comments about what I just covered. There's a chat. Yeah, I would appreciate I, help monitoring the chat and if somebody could read so out questions for me. I've answered most of the questions that came through the chat. There was one question about um, the if there's a way to donate to maintain the Schlinger Fund. And the answer that I provided in the chat is the develop the new ad hoc development committee will, will consider adding a donation button for that. And just to let membership know that Lenny Vincent is one of the main people who um, manages the Schlinger Fund. And there's apparently still a little bit of money left that is operated by the Schlinger Family Foundation. Um, and once that remainder money is settled, it may be that in a year or two, we'll get another inoculation of money to reinvigorate the Schlinger Fund. So it's, it is, um, suspended right now, but that doesn't mean that it won't be reinvigorated at a future date. Um, and if people, there was one person who was interested in um, perhaps uh, hosting. So if you're interested in hosting, any of us can help you, any of us, just send an email and we will, we will give you more details. Um, there was a question about moving JOA fully online to help finances. And I, Deb, are you here? Yep. Can you can you uh, respond to that question? Yeah. Um, yes. Printing is a major. I mean, actually, the cost per page has been increasing since we started, but it's been a very very gradual increase. Um, but. Of our current costs, the setup from say making the PDFs and the things that are printed, that's one major cost and that's a fixed cost per page. And the printing is a fixed cost per page and that's a big chunk. So if we went to totally online, had Alan Press set up the, um, the PDFs and do the typesetting, we would, yes, we would cut production costs by about, I, I guess on average, eight to 9,000 an issue. There was a request online uh, and in the chat, and I'll add to it that I don't think that should be done. <laughs> um, that there are some people who appreciate receiving hard copies. Well, and I'm not sure how that would work for taxonomic papers, because for species descriptions, I believe you need a printed publication. Yep. So thank you, Deb. Um, there's another question that came online. I'm sorry, came in the chat. Were Schlinger funds, grant, Schlinger fund grants funded from principal rather than interest? And I, Rob, I don't know the answer to that. Lenny Vincent would know the answer to that. Um, Eileen Habits um, asked a question about uh, compensation for social media team and or professional development at workshops, et cetera, at meetings. Um, if there are no funds available, could we potentially do a fundraising drive specifically for this purpose? Our social media and community engagement committees have so much potential, but they need financial support. Greta, do you want to respond? Yes, I will. Um, we talked a lot about this in the EC and um, and decided in this moment we can't afford it. Um, and so, uh, and in terms of a direct fundraising effort to support that, that will be bundled into conversations with our development committee. But also um, the executive committee wanted to just meet and, and talk about manage, making sure the, manage, the workload is managed in a way that's not so impactful on, on time that it might warrant compensation. 
Um, so that's, we can talk about that later. I just realized too, we have our minutes from that uh, that have not been sent. So the minutes for our meeting that happened on Saturday will be posted on the website um, tomorrow or as soon as Daniel can get to it. But. Um, Greta Rich, uh, Rich Bradley also asked about an additional fee for a printed subscription. And I think those are the kinds, I'll capture that in the mm -hmm. notes, but I think those are the kinds of yeah. ideas that the Deb mm -hmm. and the editors and the editorial committee will consider. And Luis Garcia asked um, if it's possible that the AAS works together with some Latin American societies. I know from, from some local societies which have improved their financial situation. Uh, Greta, do you want to respond? Um, I want to make sure I understand the question. Uh, so um, we, as we think about who to bring together to discuss a, a sustainable financial strategy, um, would welcome any anybody at the table. I mean, well, we're, we're going to think about who to include in that conversation. Um, so for sure, if somebody wants to participate in that or um, recommends uh, uh, avenues to consider, send them, send those considerations to me and I'll make sure they get transferred to the development committee. Um, I feel like I'm missing something in that question. However, um, Brian is, uh, Brian is waving at me. But I'm just going to say it's almost, it's 10 till five. So let's try to keep our comments to like two minutes or less. Oh, where'd you go, Brian? You're muted, Brian. I, well, while Brian is unmuting, I can uh, express some other things that sorry, came up. Sorry, I got that. it. Okay, sorry. I was going to say, uh, I didn't realize I had muted myself there. The, um, I believe that the internet, unless it's changed, the International Committee on Zoological Nomenclature requires that there be at least some print issues that go into mm -hmm. libraries, yeah. specific repositories, which is one of the reasons why we specifically do hard copies. Thank you. Oh, oh. Noted. And, and I should say that um, if we run out of time here, because I know Greta wants to make sure that the, the banquet starts on time, I'll save the chat and I'll capture any other comments. Uh, one of the great comments was sponsors. We should consider sponsors like the Entomological Society. Um, and all of these things I'll capture so that the new uh, development committee can consider these, these ideas or great ideas. Yeah, we welcome all of these ideas and um, plan to continue discussion. I, I don't, I'm, I, folks are just going to roll right into this space and I don't mind the conversation continuing a little bit into the banquet time. I also just want to make sure we have some time for Jason to tell us about the future meeting sites. So um, are there, raise your hand if you have a burning uh, issue or question you want to address um, in this forum with everybody present or change to AAS. Um, and and we can have a quick discussion. Anybody? Um, we will download this chat and read it very carefully and respond individually uh, if things are needed. Uh, so I appreciate all of the, I appreciate this opportunity to share with everyone the circumstances of the society at a deeper level. Um, I also just want to say uh, how um, just again serving in this role has made me feel very confident, especially um, confident in the, in the bones of the society and how strong they are. And also this meeting and the energy that this community has, I think we're, we're intrinsically very um, solid and strong in terms of being able to mentor and support. Um, and we're, uh, we're very committed to continuing to build that. So I see a hand up. Yeah. Kat, Kat, Katarina? Sorry if I just mispronounced your name. Hi, I'm Kat. You can call me Kat. Okay. Um, I, I was just wondering if, for example, I don't know um, how much money can you gain from merchandise or if you know that it is a, if it is a good uh, point of uh, getting money. But for example, uh, we have a lot of artists here and I will myself be very happy to donate some of my work so you can use it for 
merchandise, so I don't know if that would help. Thank you. That's that's a beautiful sentiment and idea. We will register that and um, be in discussion about how to connect the potential for uh, for donations coming from revenue uh, of merchandise. Great. Okay. Thank yeah. Thank Thank you, Kat. Glad you're here. Um, so with that, we're, we're only five minutes to the start of the banquet time. Um, let me just ask for a quick poll. We could wait till folks show up and they could hear Jason Bond's presentation of next year's meeting to launch the banquet. Um, uh, why don't we do that? I think that um, if people want to take a quick break, and uh, so we'll, at five o'clock, we'll just start the banquet with Jason's launch of the, of the meeting for next week. Everybody can have a quick stretch, or if you can stick around, if you want to stick around, I'll stay here. And again, thank you for being at the business meeting. So um, wait, uh, well, I guess we won't close it until after Jason presents next year's meeting. Actually, can I add one thing, Greta? Can I um, ask everyone to give a round of applause for Greta for pulling us through two amazingly difficult years? And just unmute. <laughs> Yay, yay, Greta. I have to mute myself. Like. You're awesome, Greta. Um, thank you for, for thank you for making it a reward. It's a definitely a labor of love, and I would not be able to do it without this amazing team of support. Daryl Ubik has his hand up. <laughs> Go ahead, Daryl. Um, so Brent, do we we do we formally have to close the meeting? <laughs> Sorry, my Robert rules. I, I uh, might have fallen off the rails for rules of order. That's what we've that's what we've always done. So it's a motion to to close it. I suppose you could close it now and still keep it open for Jason's announcement, or you could wait till Jason's makes makes his announcement and then close it. Okay, I think. Um, I don't know how many people have stepped away. So I'll just wait uh, until Jason's announcement. And um, so at, six, at five o'clock my time, I'll um, tell everybody who's showing up what's happening. Um, we'll do Jason's announcement and then we'll formally close the meeting and transition to the business meeting or to the banquet. <laughs> we you. have a hundred people as participants to the uh, this virtual business meeting. I think actually that's, that's a pretty good number. That's better than our usual participation at the business meeting. So thank you everyone for coming. We are waiting the exciting news about Davis, but this has been a great business meeting. Thanks to Greta getting things streamlined. Yeah, I hope that wasn't too, too quick. Oh, I love it. Make arachnology great again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wait, no, it says Greta again. <laughs> I, I, I think that's a typo. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you all are too kind. Okay, Jason, are you are you here and queued up for um, for a presentation? Calling Jason Bond. Yes, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I can see so few people. I wasn't sure where you are, but it took, um, it took me a second. Um, so you want me to go ahead and share my screen? Why don't you wait for just a second? Um, uh, so. It's five o'clock, and so, so we're, we're catching this transition window of people showing up for the banquet. The banquet. So, uh, yeah, you can actually go ahead and share your screen. There's no reason to not do that. Jason, you look a little more tan. <laughs> I'm trying to not say what I'm thinking there. <laughs> <laughs> 
Jason sent me a picture a little while ago. That's how I'm picking on him. <laughs> yeah, I got. In fact, I, I um, yeah, I, I, I've been in Baja the last uh, last couple of weeks. Um, can everybody see? Oh, darn it! Um, let me start with yep. the first slide. Can everyone see that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hold off for just a minute. Um, sure. I want to give folks a, a moment to transition um, and update people on where where they are. Would you want me to unshare that, Greta, or are you okay with? I'm okay. Would you, would somebody just spotlight me for a second? Which is I I don't like the way that sentence sounds, but please. Um, so <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, as people roll in, it's uh, it's now 5.01, so I want to officially transition and um, let everybody know what you're stepping into. Um, so we have just finished the, the sort of core business of the business meeting, and I want to thank everyone who was there and contributed comments and thoughts. Um, and uh, the last item of business for the business meeting was for Jason Bond, or is for Jason Bond, to present details of the 2022 meeting. And so we decided to just hold off till five o'clock, so, um, uh, or eight o'clock, so as many people could see this as possible. Um, so with that, uh, I'm going to let Jason take over and tell us about the plan. Um, okay. Uh, this is sort of a permutation of a, of a talk that um, uh, Rebecca or Jim or someone gave up. Uh, a few years ago back at the Virginia meeting. <laughs> and, um, and, and this is, so, so the, the meeting uh, in 2022 is, is uh, to be held, uh, we're planning to hold it here at UC Davis uh, and it'll be hosted by, um, by me and uh, Joel Ledford. Um, we had uh, originally had everything ready to go in 2020 but of course the pandemic hit, uh, we did a little bit of planning and had dates set for 2021, but uh, never really got too far into it. And now we, we've, we've sort of, uh, we've taken all, everything that we did before and uh, are, are, have repackaged it. And we've, we have all of our meeting permits and everything set up for June 26th through June 29th of of, of 2022. So, uh, so we, we hope to see everybody in Davis. Uh, then um, a little bit about Davis. Uh, so the, the main cap campus is in the Central Valley uh, in, uh, in Davis, California. We're, we're right between San Francisco and, uh, well, not right between, but uh, very close to Sacramento. And then of course, San Francisco over on the coast. Um, the main campus is is here in Davis with a with a health. Uh, the UC Davis Health campus is over in in Sacramento. Um, the it's a, a reasonably large campus, about thirty five thousand students enrolled uh, annually. Annually, um, it's a really big uh, uh, bike community. In, in, in fact, the I think it's like the National Bicycle Museum or something is 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 here in Davis. Uh, uh, during the regular during a regular school year, there are usually something like twenty two thousand uh, bicycles on campus. It's uh, it can actually be quite dangerous during uh, class changes. Uh, the the entire town and the entire campus is set up for uh, uh, for bike transportation. Um, like I said, we're in the North Central Valley. We're about ninety miles east of San Francisco and about 60 miles east of, of the Napa Valley um, wine uh, country. Um, just to say, I, I'll say that we, you know, during the pandemic, we've been really, uh, I think most of us have been really proud of, of Davis and, and keeping it uh, a, a relatively safe uh, community. And in fact, the, the, the campus was uh, highlighted um, in the New York Times a while back, uh, the our, our genomic center ran a, a saliva-based um, uh, testing center, and it was free 
to the entire community. Um, everybody living in, in, in the county uh, uh, could get tested for free uh, as often as two times, uh, two times a week. And, uh, and of course, to be on campus and, and part of our uh, sort of safety uh, program, uh, all of us were, you know, we're all uh, tested e each week. And, and this was all done for free for the, for the entire community. Um, uh, the, the, the campus is, um, uh, is, I would say, is relatively uh, compact, at least where we would have the meetings. And um, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's, I think it's, it's, a, it's quite a nice place to have a meeting. Um, we also have a, uh, the Mandavi uh, Center for the Arts, which actually the, the, the conference center is, is directly adjacent to that. Um, there's a, a, a quite beautiful arboretum on campus and, uh, and not too far away is one of the UC preserves, which is the Stebbins Cold Canyon Preserve, which is a nice place to go on hikes and uh, Lake Berryessa is there, a nice place for, for swimming and fly fishing and uh, other uh, sorts of out, outdoor activities. Um, as I mentioned, it's, it's near downtown. It's within walking distance to restaurants. Uh, we're also, which include a good number of nice places to eat, but it's a college town. So, that, so it's a lot of, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of, of restaurants and bars that, that tend to, um, uh, let's say cater to, to that crowd. Um, uh, nearby is Sacramento, and of course that's California state capital, and there's lots of great uh, places uh, for food and uh, drink, um, you know, wine and, and craft beer, things like that, uh, both in Davis and uh, in Sacramento, and of course uh, the adjacent uh, Napa Valley. Um, as I mentioned a moment ago, Napa Wine Country is about 63 and a half miles away, and Lake Tahoe is is a is a quick drive to the to the east um, through Sacramento, and then and then up into the hills. So it's uh, it's it's just a it's a great location. We're right near the coast, um, and we're right near the Sierra uh, Nevada um, mountain range. So um, I, I would. It, it, it might also be a really nice place to attend the meeting and then plan a uh, family vacation thereafter. Um, the, uh, the campus is also the home of the Bohart Museum of Entomology, um, which was founded in 1942. Uh, so it's been around for a long time. Uh, it's a huge collection. Lynn, uh, Lynn Kimsey is the, the director of the, of the museum and a colleague of mine in, in the Department of Entomology. Uh, it contains um, over 8 million specimens. We add about 30,000 specimens to it annually. And it's, uh, it's reported to be the seventh largest insect collection in North America, particularly when you wrap up all the other arthropods and, uh, well, a lot of the other ectysozoans. Um, and uh, it supports basic research, uh, um, public outreach and education and teaching programs. And uh, and we provide a lot of uh, a lot of identifications to to the um, to the the community. Of course, things like agriculture here in the Central Valley Central Valley are really important, and and uh, insect identifications play a uh, play a big role in that. Um, I'll I'll end this by just sort of a pitch for why you should come to Davis in 2022. Um, well, as Greta's mentioned, it's the 50th anniversary of the American Arachnological Society, and it's, uh, that would be a great time to, uh, to get back together and have a big meeting. Um, and, and I know that the, I've, I've heard that the, the Zoom meeting uh, the, has been great, but um, I'm going to say in person is, is better <laughs> when we can all get together and, um, and share, uh, you know, our our science and sort of life experiences, particularly over the last couple of years. Um, as I've mentioned, it's a great location for food, wine, beer, travel, and, um, and spiders, uh, particularly trapdoor spiders, I might make a plug for. We have an amazing amount of mygalomorph uh, diversity. Uh, so it's an opportunity to, to see a lot of spiders that you might not normally see. And, and in fact, we, Marshall and I uh, have a, uh, and Jane, Jim Starrett have a, a, a long-term study that we've just set up uh, at one of the preserves nearby where we have a, uh, um, 
uh, nearly a hundred uh, trapdoor spider burrows that have been marked and, and set up for, um, for long-term observation. So it's a great place to see some really neat spiders that you might uh, not normally see. Um, uh, just a few activities. If you met, if you remember from a couple of years ago, uh, Eileen Hebbets and I were going to uh, we're, we're going to kick the meeting off actually a day earlier on Saturday with a um, uh, by doing uh, her uh, eight legged encounters and a science communication um, outreach uh, event. And our plan is to 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 do that again. And in fact, Eileen mentioned to me today that. Uh, that she's got uh, uh, funding, I, I guess, uh, she didn't say from where, I, I assume maybe the, the National Science Foundation uh, to support um, the eight-legged encounters event at UC Davis. And, and then, uh, of course, like most meetings, uh, you know, we're thinking a lot about, uh, you know, things that we can do in the evenings. And Joel and I are, are working on, uh, you know, working with uh, local um, breweries and uh, vineyards um, uh, on things like wine and beer tasting. Uh, the Hagen Dawes uh, or Hagen Dawes uh, Bee uh, Honey Bee area uh, doing a um, uh, honey tasting and tour. We actually make uh, the the um, the viticulture uh, department here in the college um, actually. Uh, produces a, a wonderful uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and I hope that we'll, we'll also be able to do a, a wine tasting of UC Davis wines. Of course, uh, you know, we'll, we can set up a, a, a tour of the Bohart collection. Uh, any of the local preserves, uh, the Mondavi uh, Performing Arts Center hasn't posted its, its schedule past May this next year, but we'll know more as, as it approaches and there may be some you know, that there, there could be a, a really nice opportunity to, to, to see something there. And, uh, and um, Lauren, Lauren Esposito has contacted me and is, and is also interested in, in potentially trying to do something uh, at the Cal Academy associated with the, um, uh, with the, the meeting as well. Um, but a lot of that is, is, is still in the works. Uh, we'll get it uh, better um, solidified this um, this summer, and and of course we're 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 um, open to suggestions. So I, you know, don't uh, hesitate to to email me or, or or Joel if you if you have some ideas about what you'd like to do when you're um, when you're when you're visiting here at Davis, and uh, we will, uh, you know, I would say in the late summer. Um, start thinking about um, early registration and uh, and also um, making some announcements about how meeting planning is is progressing. So I hope to see uh, everybody there. Uh, hopefully things will will remain um, uh, will continue in the direction that we're going and and we'll be able to have a, a meeting in person here in 2022. So I'll stop there. Thank you, Jason, so much. Um, I am really looking forward to that meeting. And um, I uh, and we will be in touch about um, moving forward with maintaining virtual components as we discussed earlier. So, um, uh, so with this, um, I think there'll be opportunity for questions for Jason, but we're still, we haven't closed the formal business meeting. So um, as a transition to the banquet, um, I would like to put, for, for, put forward a motion to formally close the, um, the business meeting. So, um, so moved. Second by Walker. Excellent. Um, all in favor, raise your hand. Awesome. I think hopefully let me get into gallery view so I can see all these wonderful hands. Yeah, I think um, we're there. Great. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks again to Jason for his perseverance and um, wanting to host for three years in a, a row and just continuing to move it forward. We look forward to that. Um, okay. So with all of that, just note that the business meeting is being recorded. Um, 
I guess we can continue to record the beginning of the banquet. Um, so we're going to transition to banquet activities. And um, I'm just checking the numbers. I want to take a group photo. And I'm wondering if now is a great time to do that, because we might have some people that were here for the business meeting that might not stay and capture folks from the from the banquet. So I think this might be a sweet spot of time. Um, so uh, Sydney, are you are you turn your, turn your videos on everyone? Turn your videos on. Um, make a, a, a big smile. The funny thing about these is you don't ever really know when the picture's being taken. <laughs> so, um, so Sydney, it's all yours. So grab a, a capture this moment. All right, I'm gonna start here. Okay, so we the first love one done. Second one, and then there's three of them. So this is my last one here. And there is the third one. So now I have them all captured. That's it. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we took one at the beginning of the keynote as well. So this is a, a nice bookend. Um, okay. So if we were at an actual meeting, we would have gone home, we would have changed clothes, we would have come back, we'd probably have a beverage in our hands um, and have eaten a meal. So, um, uh, so I hope you've made yourself comfortable. You're getting into the banquet mindset. Um, and uh, we're just going to work through some uh, announcements of some of the uh, of some of the fun things that have been happening, the culmination of the uh, conference events. And um, I think we'll start with Paula Cushing. Let me uh, let me share my screen and find the uh, auction. We'll go over the auction results. Very good response. And I appreciate it from everyone. Let me get it into viewer mode. So the online auction results, it was a, a hot and heavy auction. I tell you, it was amazing. The, if it will forward. The artwork with a lot of bidders finally went for $150 to Sarah Rose. The kids robots, that was another hot item. Rachel, Rachel Malice won at $33. Be nice to spiders, Rosalind Lazar Wolf, um, our own young speaker, um, mom won at $30. The Book of the Spider by Paul Hilliard. Peter Midford took it away for 45. This was a big one. The um, the Chinese fauna, Seneca Aragnida in, Chine, in Chinese, signed by the author, went to Michael Brewer for $200. The, the uh, Die Schönsten Spielen in Europa went to Peter Midford for 65. Uh, sub, South African spiders was another hotly bid and contested item, went to Chris Throckmorton for 65. Total raise, and, and Hank Warisco won the um, Congress proceedings for $12. Total raise was $600. So give a shout out to all the people who bid. And if you bid, here are the instructions. So go to donations, uh, pay what you owe. Whoops, sorry. Put it back up there. If you were a winner, write down what you owe, pay it. And as soon as you've paid, email me at 2016.arachnology at gmail.com. Let me know that you have paid and please provide the best shipping address and a phone number that I can use to ship the item. So as soon as you paid, I will put it in the mail for you. $600 is not bad at all. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. I understand from Paula that some folks just reached out saying they just wanted to donate. And um, uh, so, and again, these, these funds go straight to supporting student research. So thank you for your, your generosity. Um, uh, okay, I'm not watching closely in the chat, but um, so, uh, but the next 
The next thing we want to do here is um, discuss and celebrate uh, the BioBlitz results, and um, there are going to be some awards provided. Um, I think, uh, Catherine, are you up for this, or Rich? Rich is That's it. Uh, that would be me, actually. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me just pull up my uh, presentation here. Got some cool stuff to share with everyone. Um, I have Let's see. How does this look? Oh, well, that's that's jumping ahead, isn't it? Um, there we go. Um, so, okay. Uh, let's see. Let me just... All right. So uh, I have the wonderful honor of sharing both the uh, artwork contest results and the Bible's results. So we're going to talk about the artwork contest first because the presentations this year were just absolutely incredible. Um, um, and I just want to make sure, can everyone see the presentation all right? We're, we're good. Sebastian, your sound is a little bit muddled. I don't Yeah, know. I think you're going okay. through your, yeah, I, it is. It is. I think you're going through your computer, not through your microphone. Every single time. There you so go. I was doing that. There, see, now, now, now it's on nice and smooth. Yeah, you get the fancy microphone, but you still have to go through the dumb computer. Uh, and just want to make sure that the screen share is working fine. Yes. Okay. Great. Um, well, in that case, uh, then I'll get started. Um, okay, so uh, first we have the prize for the um, mix arachnid art category. This is a fascinating one because, oh, I don't know why it's doing that. Fascinating one because um, a variety of things could be, could be entered. Uh, and the prize for this was this beautiful embroidered orb web made by T. Francis, also the creator of our logo. So you know it's a beautiful piece of art. Um, the runner up for this category was the African Violet Tarantula uh, by Sadie Anderson. And I, is this on like, uh, one second, I think this is on like a slideshow setting uh, because it's, it's playing just at ad hoc. Okay, now, no. No, no, it's doing that. I apologize. I feel like I something happened. My um, you probably my have student, the auto slide advance on problems, on and then now now it's cursed me as well. I <laughs> uh, with this. So, geez, all right. Let's see if I can get this to behave. Um, I just want to present like a normal person. This is the fun of a virtual meeting, folks. It's the fun of a virtual meeting. Uh, again, I've done this so many times, and yet the one time, it's no longer due. Um, all right, this time, yeah, it, it's just slide showing. Why is it slide showing? It's just continue. It's like slowly advancing the slides. Without Sebastian, I'm it. so sorry. It's because I copy pasted the like the slideshow that I made of the art when I was making this oh. it timings on. I don't know if you can turn that off. This is okay. All right. my you, mistake. You've discovered some deep secrets here. Um, now everyone knows how this is made. Um, duration. I think if I set this to advance on mouse click. Yeah, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. Advance on mouse click. Okay, and not after. And then that should have set it for every slide. Okay, we are back to normal, folks. I apologize. Um, now, now I can actually show you cool things and not me fumbling at Zoom. Um, okay, let's get this going back again. And I will show you this wonderful, yes, share that. Okay, and are we sharing? Yes, we are, great. Um, okay, so I once again, Let's start with the mixed arachnid art category. Um, so I announced the prizes for this, which I'm very excited for whoever gets that. And our runner up for this category was um, the, this wonderful knit uh, piece by Sadie Anderson uh, titled African Violet Tarantula, which incredible, absolutely incredible. Um, uh, but our winner for the category was uh, this um, digital piece Call, named Weaving Nephila by Yin Lin, Yi Lin Zhao. Apologies if I mispronounce your name, I'm terribly sorry. Um, congratulations on creating this beautiful piece of artwork um, and we'll get do uh, instructions for how to claim your stuff 
um, at the end of the meeting, you'll get an email from us. Sebastian, um, I'm moving... confused. Can I yes. interrupt? So yes. um, you have Francis. T. You Francis, presented... yeah. You presented her first. Was she not? She the... is that. This is the prize. This is the prize oh, that I can see. be I'm won. So, so the winner is going to receive this. So we're going to show the prize. It's up, and then the pieces are going to be um, are going to be introduced. So. Um, uh, Yi Lin, you'll be receiving that wonderful embroidered orb web, um, which is pretty fitting to your wonderful uh, piece of art. So congratulations. Um, next, I'd like to share the um, runner up and winner for the mic microscopy, microscopic photography category. Um, the prize here are some of Catherine Scott's very coveted spider face masks, which are my favorite masks. I, I see many of us putting the, having them on because they're just great, uh, both in quality and design. Um, the runner up for this category was this piece, Sex Requires Complexity by Abel Perez Gonzalez, which we, I think we can all agree there's much complexity going on here. Um, but the winner goes to actually our Platnik awardee uh, for the piece Bad Hair Day by Ivan Magalhães. Uh, <laughs> I think wonderfully titled and some excellent microscopic photography. Uh, so, Yvonne, you'll be getting those face masks mailed to you. Congratulations to you and everyone who en else who entered this category. Um, okay, this is a good one. They're all good, but I love the scientific illustration category, um, personally. And the winner here has one of maybe my favorite prizes, uh, the excellent All the Arachnids t-shirt by Thomas Shahan. Again, one that many in the society love to wear. Um, I have it on two sweaters, different colors. Very good, very good design. Um, so the runner up for this category is again, our Platnik awardee, very multi-talented man, Ivan Magalhães for his piece, Microthena Beta, beautiful illustration of a very cool spider. But the winner for this category is Franz Anthony for his piece, Spiders of Yogyakarta, Indonesia. And a gorgeous poster with some of the prettiest spiders I've seen in quite a while. Congratulations, Franz, and to everyone who entered in this category. It was a joy seeing all of your art. Um, but now I'd like to move on to the uh, Arachnids in Controlled Conditions category. The prize here is a, a beanie of underappreciated arachnids. So you're gonna get all the weird orders here that we all love and are near and dear to our hearts, even though maybe not everyone knows about them yet. Um, and that was created by um, uh, uh, Peggy Mudler or the Vex Mudler she goes by is the title of her store. Um, these are really cool hats. And so I love that this is gonna be one of our prizes. The um, runner up for this category is uh, by Issa Betancourt. The photograph is titled Fresh Feet. And I think this is someone's uh, Tarantula, or a tarantula right after molting. And you can see really nicely the toe pads and the toe hooks, which are one of the more adorable parts of an already adorable spider. Um, but the winner for this category is this wonderful piece by Caitlin Henderson called Organized Chaos, which honestly speaks for itself. It's a beautiful, beautiful photograph. Um, so congratulations, Caitlin. And to, again, to everyone else who entered this category, for a lot of these, I know I've heard from talking to a lot of people, the voting was a big challenge because there's so many good pieces. Um, next, I think we have a very fitting combination of category and prize. The winner for Arachnologists at Work will receive a spider bandana that they can wear while out in the field um, and representing what they're gonna go catch. Uh, this piece is created by Mary Capaldi. She sells them. I have one. They are amazing. They're some of my favorite pieces of clothing. Um, so let's see what the runner-up and winners are for this. The runner-up here is uh, the piece Colonial Defenses, a self-portrait by Angela Chuang. Uh, gorgeous, really cool spiders, really cool situation, beautiful photography. But the winner for this category is... Uh, a piece, Let There Be Light by Darko D. Kotoras. Uh, the joys of uh, 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 beat sheeting at night, a really nice background. 
So congratulations, Zarko. You'll be receiving that wonderful bandana to keep your neck protected from flies while you're out at night catching spiders. Um, finally, our last category, uh, when with the most entries, arachnids in the wild. Um, again, one of my favorites to look through the entries for. The prize here is this absolutely gorgeous painting, the original by Rebecca Steele. Um, and so I'd just like to show, I mean, this, this is, there were so many entries in this category and I think all of them like had the potential to win. I thought I picked which one was gonna win. I was wrong, um, but really I, they're all incredible. The runner up here um, was Erin Powell with her photograph, Opiliones of New Zealand. If anyone got to the joy of seeing her talk, these are such cool animals. And this is a gorgeous photo of an incredibly weird animal. So much fun. Um, but the winner here in terms of votes was uh, another person who presented at the meeting, Sean McCann, um, who uh, won with this piece, uh, A Good Night's Work, featuring his really cool uh, presentation or research on these spiders whose name I forget off the top of my head. But of course, since Sean was part of the organizing group who was behind the photograph, he's graciously uh, declined to accept an award. And so actually, Aaron Powell, you will be receiving the uh, wonderful painting by Rebecca. So congratulations to you and to everyone else who entered. Um, and I can now move on to the bio blitz results um, here because we've got some really cool things to share. Uh, so the bio blitz was a huge success and I wanna say thank you to everyone for uh, entering it and participating. It was so much fun to see all of the entries and the things that we found. So I wanted to go through some of them with you uh, just so you get an idea of the diversity of animals that we managed to capture in just a weekend. Uh, so first, we're going to go through them by order. Uh, we actually got a really nice spread of, of different orders of arachnids here. So we actually found an amb amblypigeon, pigeon, uh, Paraphrinus lavifrons. So someone found one of these. Uh, Osa, user Osa Eyeshine. Thank you so much. Our only representation of this order. Um, we also found a solid fugid. Nice, another one of those. Um, it still needs to be ID'd down. If so, if, if Paula, if you're out there, anyone else with solid fugid skills, um, if we can maybe get a little closer than the family of this so we can actually boost our species numbers, which were already really high. Um, next up, pseudoscorpions coming in with six observations of five species with potentially more if we manage to ID this, this one here. Uh, by that was observed by Sarah Rose. So thank you for adding the apilionid or the sorry the pseudoscorpions in. Uh, and of course, from pseudoscorpions, we can hop over to the wonderful scorpions. We're moving up of twenty observations again of five species here. Um, most by uh, or at least this one was by user D underscore B, who chooses to remain mysterious on iNaturalist. Um, of course, mites being mites. We actually got a few of them, quite a good number. They're kind of everywhere. Um, Thomas Shahan found this really beautiful uh, Gulf Coast tick. We had 117 observations, 20 species. And man, there were some, I, I've always underestimate the, the acarids because like you see, you, you might, you know, tiny little thing, you see something like this, look at that gorgeous pattern. Um, oh, I just heard that the, the uh, see in chat that it was Diego, um, Barales, who was the one who found that scorpion in the previous photo. So congrats, Diego, on that observation. But of course, the big numbers are coming from where you think they're coming. The spiders, 1,188 observations, 279 species of animals in three days. Y'all are incredible. Like that's, that's an amazing weekend by anyone's count. We got everything. I'm going to, uh, there's so many. I'm just going to run through a bunch here because there were so many in this category that I want to highlight. Beautiful Umidia trapdoor spider. Um, gorgeous. You met, somehow got it to, to stay at the door when you lifted it open. Beautiful. Uh, you know, I love my trapdoor spiders. Any trapdoor spider is just, just so much fun to see. We've got the celebrity Afona Pelmas. Afona Pelma, Johnny Cashy, I showed up. Um, Soderick, uh, if you, 
our user Sadrik shout put your name in the chat so that I can actually uh, shout out your name if you'd want to. Um, but yeah, again, beautiful tarantula looks like uh, possibly a wandering male here. Uh, that's Sadie Anderson who found this tarantula. So congratulations, Sadie. Thank you so much for your gorgeous observation of a gorgeous animal. Uh, and next we've got, uh, ooh, oh, I love this one. Uh, Kukulkania, one of those really cool spiders that I always think is, is more my gallimorph than it is. Again, by Diego Barales, uh, beautiful photo. Um, and of course, now we got to go to the, my favorites, the Phytopus, the jumping spiders. Look at this Phytopus put Nami. I believe this is an adult female. She's gorgeous. She's got metallic green on her face, those eyebrows, another beautiful Thomas Shahan observation. Um, and of course, there's love for the, the orb weavers or the weavers, it's in an orb weaver. Uh, spin thar, spin tharus, I, I never get it right. Trigonum, parasitic cob weaver, really cool animal, really cool behavior that we learned about um, by Becca. And or, next we've got, uh, ooh, the sack spiders. So Castianera cingulata, uh, those ant mimic sack spiders, really cool spider. Um, again, J, J Forma North, if you are Jay here, and I'd love to shout you out if you just put your name in the chat, um, I'd be happy to do so. But again, really cool animal. Those corinids need some representation. Now we're going to go back to the big eyes because, you know, I like my spiders with good vision. Dinopus. You can't have a good bio blitz without a good Dinopus. Look at those things. They're, they're fascinating. It's such a cool animal. And I'm incredibly jealous of anyone that lives within a weekend of a Dinopus. Oh man. Um, so once again, beautiful spider. Uh, we've got another actually from this one. This one's great. Oh, that's Tracy. Okay, Tracy, Th beautiful shot, beautiful animal. Thank you so much for all your contributions because you had a lot of these highlights. Um, but now I want to kick it over to Nafal, who was our, if you remember, our iNaturalist speaker on the um, ID Communities workshop. Look at that Cosmophasis. Look at those colors on that jumping spider. I mean, I, gorgeous, gorgeous animal. Um, and I do want to highlight one story that was relayed to me via email, because I know everyone is out there. You're looking for spiders. You're out in the wild. And I just want to give an award for the most extreme bio blitz encounter uh, to Susan Wise Eagle, who sent me the story via email about heading out dedicated to collecting some rare spiders from a really special um, collection site, uh, only to be met by the bear guardian of the spiders, <laughs> who clearly this was his territory and the clam searching was more important than the bio blitz. Uh, so thankfully, Susan saw the bear in time and decided to find another place to observe arachnids. <laughs> I agree. This is Look, look, I, I show you so many. I know some of us like vertebrates. I, I don't, but hey, it's one in there. It's okay. It's, it's hey, just pretend it's like a tarantula that had a really bad day and lost half its legs. You know, it's close enough. It's close enough. Um, so there were some really cool things uh, about the Bible that we did this year that were special. We had a contest on who could actually guess how many species you would get. And this was a lot of fun seeing all the guesses come in. The prize for this category is this wonderful shirt donated by one of our featured artists, uh, the Tarantula Collective, that does a variety of video videos about tarantula and arachnid keeping. Um, and so the winner for this category, and I know you're all bated breath because I saw everyone had a guess. It's not me. I, I'm, I was upset. I undershot. I, I underestimated y'all. Um, our winner, um, very, very close to the final answer, uh, was indeed now fall with 321 guessed, and the actual number as of when we compile these, 327 species in three days. You're doing over 100 species a day, folks? Come on, that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. Um, I do wanna share a great, story, really funny story that this almost went to Catherine Scott, who was closer numerically with a guess of 333, but because 
someone, I forget who instated it. We went by Price is Right rules. Catherine went over and you can't go over. And so therefore now fall just narrowly snagged that victory. So congratulations on not only um, your contributions, but on your really accurate uh, projections of our results. Um, uh, next, I'd like to move on to a really important category, most identification. So the winner of this category is gonna get a signed copy of Spy Coup uh, by Leslie Boulian, beautiful book of poetry about our favorite animals. Um, and this award goes out to Rebecca Ray, uh, who is the infamous or famous Tiger BB on iNaturalist. If you ever post a Salticid on iNaturalist, there's like 80 to 90% chance that Rebecca is going to weigh it on that ID and get super, like immediately know what it is. I have so many of my Salticid photos ID'd by her. So it makes sense that she had 479, are you kidding me? 479 identifications over the weekend. This is an iNaturalist power user uh, that I am so glad is part of our, uh, our, our community because man, I, before I knew who this was, I just, who's Tiger BB? They know like every Salticid everywhere. How does one person know all of this? <laughs> so Rebecca, thank you so much. Mm. Excuse me, a lot of talking, need some water. All right. So moving on to most observations, beautiful prize here that will come in handy for next year's meeting so that we can spot you at the airport at a distance. This uh, luggage cover by Nikki Bay, shout out to your love, shout out your love of apilionids to the entire world as you should be all the time. Uh, this prize goes out to the one the only there's really only one person who could do this and we all know who it is it's now fall i mean look at this this man is alleged 113 observations in three days like spotting arachnids left right i mean there's a reason we got him for the iNaturalist uh talk amazing amazing arachnologist like blown, I mean, you, you beat the, the runner up by 30, 30 arachnids, that's crazy. Uh, congratulations so much. And again, to everyone who took part on, uh, in the BioBlitz, it was such a fun thing that I really hope we do every year because man, uh, I, like, I was here running most of the things, but just seeing, like I was inside running stuff, but just seeing everything from around the world come in, we get arachnids from all across, the world, all continents in Antarctica. Amazing. Thank you, everybody. Um, and I will now hand it over to our next series of announcements. But just once again, thanks to all the artists and the BioBlitz. And if you want to bump that number higher so that next year we have to work even harder to beat it, you can still ID. There's still things that need IDs. Um, and you can bump that species number higher, make it harder for next year to beat the amazing record of 2021. Um, excellent. Uh, I'm going to, let me end my sharing. Thanks everybody for uh, listening to me uh, uh, drone on. And yeah, I'll hand it back to everyone. Sebastian, that is so far from droning. I am like beaming with joy. Um, thank you so much. And I just wanna like um, shout out Sebastian, Catherine, Rich, the energy you brought to this conference with all the programming you did um, and the outreach that you've done is such an incredible gift. Um, I'm blown away by, uh, by the talent that the artist represented in so many dimensions. Um, and we should just make sure everybody knows that there's still a link on the website to all the pages for these artists go support them. And um, I love the way this, uh, the, the art and um, this work magnifies the love for arachnids um, out there. So please go support them. Um, yeah, if I could add one thing, I realized I wasn't clear. The art, all of the art that were the prizes here, these are all pieces by our featured artists. So if you saw something here, they're like, man, I didn't win, but I really want that or something that looks like that. Just head on over to the conference website, go to the featured artists, go to their store and support them and get some really cool arachnid art because we've got a wonderful collection on there that you could be wearing arachnids on every part of your body, on every accessory that you have. And I know that's everyone's dream. It's mine for sure. 
I love it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm now officially a fully addicted to iNaturalist. Um, and uh, <laughs> thanks for that. Um, okay. So um, uh, the next thing on our agenda is to announce the winners of students, uh, student awards for student talks, student presentations. And for that, I have to follow that. <laughs> I know. Sorry. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just quickly say, um, in case no, people are unaware, so Andy Roberts is the, the incoming president, so he will take over being president September 1st, and so um, announcing, judging, coordinating judging and announcing students awards is one of the responsibilities of that role, so I want to thank him for doing that and, um, and for stepping into the service. Absolutely. Right. This, I, I have to admit, is one of the jobs that I love. Um, I, there are so many fantastic, fantastic presentations. And uh, I will tell you that this is one of the most difficult jobs at a conference is trying to narrow this down to, to, to winners. And frankly, was made even more so this year because we had just so many, uh, so many participants. So um, formally, uh, I would just wanna say that it, it is my pleasure to announce the winners of the student competition. Uh, and I do have to say that given the number of participants, we actually decided to break the awards up. Now you may recall, normally we give out awards in the poster and paper competition, but we had so many papers, we split those into two tracks, the track one and track two, and we'll have winners in each of those categories. So um, the, I want to end for a, a point of business, I guess I need to say, um, the, in each of these, I guess, three categories for this particular uh, event, uh, the judges, a team of judges selected the top two presentations to receive awards. So uh, we have first place and runner up winners in each category. First place winners in each category receive a $150 award and one year of free membership in the society. Second place or runner up winners receive a $100 award and one year of free membership in the society. I'm gonna begin with the much awaited poster presentation category. Uh, judges in this category considered 12 projects uh, and after careful consideration, they selected the following. So our runner up this year goes to Tiffany Guth, for Landmark Guided Teammates Learning in the Wolf Spider Tigrosa Hello. -O. Congratulations. And in first place, following up on a second place win last year is Maddie Hannipal, Mud Dauber Nests as Sources of Spiders in Mercury Monitoring Studies. Congratulations to both of you. And there come the comments. Excellent job, guys, excellent job. All right, uh, I will announce the uh, track one paper category next uh, in this category. Uh, so this was primarily behavior ecology, that side of things. Uh, and judges in this category considered a total of 14 presentations, which is quite a lot to consider. Uh, and in this, uh, contest. They selected as the runner-up Anna Holmquist for the role of historical legacies in shaping spider communities across two mountain ranges in Sulawesi, Indonesia. And our first place person in the track one category goes to Abel Corver for towards a computational ethology of web making, quantifying movement sequences, underlying stages of web building in Ouroboros diversus. Congratulations. Excellent talks. I saw both of those. They were really, really good. Thank you so much. All right. And now for the track two category, which was, uh, typically the taxonomy, systematics, and then a few in public outreach, as I recall. Uh, we had, let's see, 12, 12 presentations considered in this category. 
Uh, the runner up goes to uh, Daniela Candia Ramirez for diversity and evolution of a new genus of tiger rump tarantulas of Southern Mexico and Central America, Rani therophosidae therophosini. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm so distracted by the feed going on next to me with the bravos. It's great. Okay, uh, the now for the, the first place prize goes to, are you ready? Brace for it. Tierney Bougie for dynamics of hybridization in a complex unimodal hybrid zone between members of the Habronatus Americana subgroup, Salticity. Now, before we move on, I'm not quite done. Um, the track two judges uh, unanimously asked me to, um, uh, to extend a very special recognition. Um, I have to say that in this category, there were five talks within a couple of points of the very top. And while this talk didn't quite make the top two, uh, a special recognition goes out to uh, Winifred Freddie Wolf, who gave, in the judge's view, one of the best talks of the entire session. So congratulations to all of you. Uh, I really did a nice job. Thanks so much. Um, Winners, uh, if you are on here, or I will contact you later, please do contact the society treasurer, uh, Dr. Shillington, to arrange for a transfer of funds, and her email address is available on the society website. So I will be uh, happy to, to send you that direction a little bit later so we can move on with our business this evening. Congratulations, winners. Ooh, thank you, everybody. I kind of want to unmute and have a raucous round of applause. Um, so congratulations, uh, presenters. Um, I have to say, uh, watching all of these talks um, just made me feel, I always feel good about the society. But um, uh, I feel like the future of arachnology is, is solid in um, your hands. We've got much we've got much to address given the loss of biodiversity and the major problems and we're in conversation. but I feel like the the collection of passion and talent um, and also mentorship. I think the I want to reach out and just acknowledge all of the strong mentors who have um, supported students and continue to, um, to cultivate uh, excellence in, in so many different ways. Um, so thank you to all of you for all of that. Um, so uh, yeah, wild rounds of applause. Um, this is the, that, that was the last um, set of major announcements that uh, we wanted to make as part of the banquet. Um, normally the band would start and we'd start dancing. Sorry. He's ready. Instead, my border collie is keeping me safe from a motorcycle going by. So sorry about that. Um, uh, <laughs> yes, Jackson's ready to dance. Um, but I just want to close this part. So just to let you know, what's going to happen next is we've asked the uh, Sydney um, Gelling to open uh, 15 just breakout rooms that are just going to be numbered breakout rooms, plus one that is Arachno Jams. And those rooms are just there for people to go hang out and visit. And if you want to talk about different things, you can do that. Um, but before I let Brian or Paula say another word. I just need to acknowledge for um, one more time, um, you just saw a demonstration of the phenomenal energy and work that uh, Catherine Scott, Sebastian Escaveri have done on behalf of the society for this meeting and the, the kind of energy and um, that that brings to our community is palpable and I'm deeply grateful to them. Um, and uh, also, I want to just shout out Sydney Gelling, who's been managing all the Zoom in the background. Um, she has masterfully held this together. Um, 
I want to thank uh, uh, Peter Midford and Brian Patrick, who um, have been sitting in the Zoom spaces, managing the logistics of the Zoom and recording all of this so that we can make it available to the public. Um, Peter is processing that. So thank you. That's We're curating these this experience so it becomes a resource that will be sustained. Um, I also want to thank the moderators. We had so much just proactive offer to, for people to do things like moderate, um, mentor, um, uh, judge. <laughs> so all of the stuff that happens to make this, this work. Um, and we're deeply grateful and it belies the commitment and energy that people have to the society. Um, I also want to thank the people that contributed to all of the programming. So um, we had a wonderful DEI panel that Jillian Ku, um, uh, oh my gosh, Kravowski, I'm going to totally, I didn't write your name down, Jillian. Um, she masterfully organized a workshop that if you weren't there, Kravowski, thank you, Catherine. Um, it's recorded, see it. It's like direct focused um, ways that we can all um, improve in our ability to advocate um, for uh, supporting equity and diversity in arachnology. Um, for the people who sat on the panel, so Mercedes Burns, Lauren Esposito, um, maybe Ann Andrade and Jillian, who shared very openly their own experiences um, as people of color um, in marginalized groups in the sciences. Uh, so I'm really grateful for their vulnerability and willingness to do that. Um, uh, um, I've, I, I'm sure I'm, I'm forgetting others that contributed, but I just want to say without a doubt, um, this, uh, this meeting and it's all of its successes have been the product of a team of passionate, talented people that I'm grateful to work with. So, um, Sarah, oh my gosh, Sarah Stellwagen. <laughs> um, so Sarah, um, did all of the work to organize the scientific programming. Um, and uh, often with a toddler on her lap. <laughs> so she coordinated the schedule, worked with, which worked, worked beautifully. She coordinated the, the posters. And um, uh, so, yes. Yes, and Sydney, the disembodied voice. So uh, thank you all. Paula, Paula, um, Paula kept, held us together logistically um, in so many ways and was a voice of both historical knowledge of the of the of the society and um, and really a stable source of my insofar as I am sane um, I have politic credit for that in some ways um, and uh, and Brian who stepped up and did so many things in the background including communicating with everyone so um, thank you everybody I'm going to stop talking now um, but thank you everybody for for that work. Don't forget Daniel, who kept the website up to date during the meeting. Yes. Like not just before, like during the meeting on a daily, almost hourly basis. Yes. We've been Greta, Rich Bradley had this great idea to create a breakout room where all the winners could please go so they could have a group photo. That is brilliant. Rich, so yes. The poster, all the poster and oral presentation winners and runners up. Um, Go into breakout room one. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so go to go to one. Um, that's a, a great idea. And um, I don't know, Sydney, can you go in and make take a picture of that, or one of us? Maybe Andy, you want to go in and take a picture of of, of them, just a screenshot. Uh, okay. <laughs> Or I, 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 somebody needs to, maybe one of them, probably one of them can just pull that off. I can own. also go in and do it, um, but I did name one of the rooms just winners. Okay. So <laughs> find it there. Can we all go in and out of the winner's room if we feel like we need it tonight? <laughs> Should we have a loser's room too? <laughs> um, That's any room that I'm in. <laughs> not, not at all true. Okay, um, uh, I, if I've forgotten anybody that's contributed, my deepest apologies, um, that's on me. And um, thank you so much, everybody. Arachno Jams will be one of the room, enter um, if you want to be entertained for a little while. <laughs>